Okay, welcome back. The search is on for the Caribbean's next top model. And our guest in this segment is on the island to whip up the anticipation for the January 30 season kickoff. She's the show's host, former Miss Universe, Trinidad and Tobago's Wendy Fitzwilliam. Right now, right here on our stage. Wendy, so good to have you. Lovely to be here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for having me. Okay, so sum up the first two, two so far for me. Exciting, um, well received across the region, and our girls really stepped up. You know, they showed up from everywhere. This show is pan Caribbean, so it's okay. English, Dutch, French, and Spanish speaking Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And we had girls in both the first and second seasons from across the board. You know, Guadeloupe, um, the DR, so uh, it's a all over. It's yes, a success the Dutch story. Caribbean, uh, Curacao, and Suriname. So, in that regard, in terms of the participation, it's been a success. In terms of the viewership, mm -hmm. the show is at the top. Um, in every market, except Trinidad and Tobago, where it's number two in its time slot. Um, but I think why the show has done so well uh, in terms of viewership, it's because it's us presenting ourselves in a format that is familiar, mm -hmm. but by us. We are not allowing yes. anybody else to define us. And most of our um, programming uh, does not bridge the island gap, as it were, and furthermore, the language barrier. You know, so we don't generally have entertainment. We have no idea what's going on in Curacao or Martinique right. or the DR, generally. And even within the English-speaking Caribbean, you know, apart from what your politicians are doing or my politicians mm -hmm. are doing, um, we really don't have a good idea of, you know, what's happening generally on the ground in Jamaica or Grenada and that kind of thing. And Top Model is an opportunity for us outside of a sporting activity mm -hmm. um, to really get behind our girls, root for our uh, team. So we see in, in um, our numbers when, um, you know, the, our numbers are being reduced, season one and two, uh, you know, the Northern Caribbean. So if Cayman, Bahamas, and Jamaica are up against each other, if the others disappear and Jamaica is there, everybody in the Northern Caribbean is like, cool, oh, Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the interaction on All social right. media is tremendous. All right. It's so very how, fortunate in that regard. Uh, how do you go about selecting and eliminating these so the process um, is relatively involved. Um, our selection uh, process, or the, the application process, I should say, is the easy spot of um, participating in, in Top Model. You can sign up online on our website. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, our application form is there. You can upload your photographs. And you, know, you don't have to have professionally done shots. You don't have to be a model. Um, our one criteria is female, 18 to 27. Um, we also do a few in-island live castings. So we've done for all our seasons here in um, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And we do usually three um, to four other islands as well, live castings. But you don't have an advantage, per mm -hmm. se, in the live casting over the um, our online castings. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have a team uh, that narrows down our uh, participants to roughly 50. And then we do a psychometric test <laughs> mm. of all of the young ladies. Um, and of course, this is all um, CBS is doing because this is a franchise co-owned by Tyra Banks and her production company and um, CBS International. Um, so our rules are very strict with regard to how we execute So top it's basically, model. it's a, f a franchise? It's a franchise of America's Next Top Model. Okay. Um, and we, so we do that, and then I, I select with my team of judges and our agency, our finalists, usually 17 finalists. Mm -hmm. So the show starts with, with 17 girls from around the region. My team of judges comprises of three permanent Mm -hmm. um, including myself, um, Pedro Virgil, who is an Australian photographer. Um, obviously, if I fly him all the way from Australia <laughs> to the Caribbean for this, he's yeah. exceptional. He really is an excellent photographer, and his um, work covers the gamut of the industry. So Pedro has done huge campaigns, you know, for big cosmetics companies, athletic brands, covers for magazines, editorial spreads for magazines like Vogue and... Um, Bazaar and others. He's very well respected and he's easy to work with. He's not a devil. 
Okay. And, um, and then my other judge, um, this season I've introduced a new one, um, Socrates McKinney from the Dominican Republic, as he says, La República Dominicana. <laughs> <laughs> Socrates um, hosts one of the biggest fashion events in the Caribbean, um, Dominicana Moda, um, which features designers from all over the region, um, and he always features as well um, an internationally renowned designer. So he's had um, from Oscar de la Renta to Carolina Herrera, Marchesa, everybody um, participate at Dominicana Moda. And most importantly, he has launched the careers of some of the biggest girls from the DR, some of the biggest models from the DR um, working internationally. So the, the winners, Yes. what do they get? Ooh, I think our price package is hot. Mm -hmm. They receive, of course, Flo being our premium sponsor, um, the latest generation iPhone and a uh, plan from Flo. Flo. They receive 25,000 US dollars in cash, and most importantly, yeah. a modeling contract with Mint Management out of New York. Oh. Yes. That's a big price. That's the big price, because that, if you are uh, serious about being a model, is the opportunity to launch an international career. So how are the previous winners doing now? Not badly, I have to say. So season one's winner um, decided not to go with our agency, but she has signed on with another agency in New York. Um, and she has done Nike and has been consistently a Nike model for the last two and a half years. Um, and a couple of other um, uh, brands, catalog work, because she's a little more um, commercial. Our season two winner is just about now um, to head off to New York. Um, as a matter of fact, I think she leaves next week um, to work uh, Fashion Week. She's been booked for several shows of Fashion Week. So, you know, I must ask you about your own career now. <laughs> Um, oh, I mean, but this, me, this is all you do my now? Career, <laughs> No. Before you ask me about my career, I have to say that our season two winner um, will be living in New York. So it's not like she was, is Grenadian, Katisha. Mm -hmm. She's not going to be going back and forth. You know, we also arrange for our girls to get their proper work papers mm -hmm. um, to live in the U.S., work between America and Europe. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, no joke. So, is this, <laughs> so right, Wendy, so, what's going on with Wendy? What's going on with Wendy, the Wendy brand, the full brand now? Like, so this is one little piece of uh, One little of piece. Yes. Um, honestly, a significant piece. It takes a massive effort to pull off something like top model regionally course, because yes. we don't have as developed a broadcast industry cross region mm -hmm. as, say, our U.S. counterparts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been um, a challenge behind the scenes, but a challenge well worth it. Um, I also have a radio show uh, at home, which is in its eighth season now on Heartbeat Radio. We air online, of course, on Radio in Trinidad and in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I still also um, consult in the energy space. Oh. Yeah, yeah. so I completed a project in Tanzania um, at the end of uh, the start of 2015, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just about to embark on another project in that space. I call myself a glorified sales girl. I'm very much simplifying what I do, <laughs> <laughs> but, but my job is, is, is to basically find markets for your gas and petrochemical projects for your gas. But didn't you go to law school? Yes, I did. I am also an attorney, but I've never practiced law in the traditional sense. But let me tell you, yeah. <laughs> between top model and my consultancy, I'm... Definitely using that legal education. Okay, of course. <laughs> and in raising my now 10 year old son. Oh, That's yeah. my number one job. 10? Yeah, and he uh. is no joke. Uh, you know, last school term, he was a little bit naughty, as most kids are 10 with his iPad. He couldn't get off of it. Mm. So I banned him from it during the term, and then he drafted a contract and presented me with a contract <laughs> at the uh. beginning of the holidays with the amount of time he would have every day to use it and how I must treat with him when he's on his iPad. Really? I can't just call him from the kitchen. Really? I have to come to him, tap him on the shoulder so that he can hear me because he must not get, as we say in Trinidad, a buff. So he's on the turn already. He already. <laughs> ten. Okay? And he presented me with a drafted contract. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, so clearly. So the, the president of the United States. Yes. The president-elect Donald yes, Trump. Because Barack Obama is still the president. When he won Miss Universe, he was the owner. The oh, yes, that's owner, right. right? Mm -hmm. You met him and everything. Yes, I worked for Mr. Trump. Okay. So what's your impression of him? 
Um, I think exa he, exactly who he is is what he presents to the world. Yes. Exactly what he presents. But there's no um, backstory with Mr. Trump. Exactly who he is is what he presents to the world. Now, he was, has always been very supportive of me, uh -huh. even after um, winning Miss Universe. Uh, always, you know, always. Uh -huh. I worked with the company on so many projects mm -hmm. after. Um, he endorsed my book <laughs> in, in 2009. His endorsement was endorsement is on the cover of my book. He's always been very supportive of me, and not only me, several of his title holders. But I think he's presented who he is to the world. If he, if he likes you and he's for you, he's 120% behind so no, you. you, you and if not, no, he's not. No discrimination, none of these rac rac racial, racist no. stuff that is alleged no. to have And you know, at the time I won Universe, um, Puffy and, and was very, very big, uh, Sean Combs. Um, and Russell Simmons and Mr. Trump were very good friends up until about Easter last year. <laughs> you know? Because Russell is a very, is yeah. very clearly a Democrat and Mr. Trump now is not. Yeah. So, no. <laughs> now is not. So, so, um, so I, I honestly did not experience um, any uh, uh, discrimination um, from him. Now, as I said, he's very clear. If he likes you, he's for you. If not, he's not. Okay. You know, I was fortunate in that he has been for me. Do you think he'll be a good president? I'm hoping he will be. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know. Time will tell, but I'm hoping he will be. Um, I know that, <laughs> um, you know, we've seen it all. I mean, this has been the Game of Thrones <laughs> uh, election. You enjoyed it? Um, the campaign? I enjoyed it from the perspective of uh, entertainment, but once yeah. you stepped out of the entertainment bubble, it was kind of scary, in all honesty. And not just, you know, um, some of the things uh, Mr. Trump said, but I always admired in U.S. politics the fact that they debated real issues. And this was the first election I've in my lifetime that has been really uh, issue-free. Mm -hmm. And that, so it came across very much like a reality show. <laughs> it became all about who's most popular, as opposed to issues that impact all of us, even us here in the Caribbean, the entire world. We're seeing it. Every time Mr. Trump tweets, you know, Toyota's stock fell off by mm -hmm. $1.2 billion because he's like, you want to build your cars in Mexico and sell them in America? Dream on. Dream on eh? Within five minutes, the company lost, the stock lost $1.2 billion in value, the company. That's, you know, that's significant. And, and so we will see. What is he going to do? Anyway. We'll find out soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is so nice to have you right here on our stage. Oh, it's good to be here. It's back. good to be here. Come back real soon. You invite me and I will be back. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. I will look forward to the new season of The Top Model. Thank you. All right. So where will it be available? So Caribbean Sex Model Models starts airing January 30th, 9 p.m. on Flu One. All right. So there you have her right here on stage, Wendy Fitzwilliam. And it should be Williams, but we will talk about that afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stay with us still to come right here on stage. The black man, believe it or not, of dancehall. And later, Orville Borel, otherwise known as Shaggy. On everything music-related of 2016, here and abroad. All coming up. We'll be back. It's all of your love, right back. The kind of love we keep you coming back. Thanks for watching our video. If you're not yet a subscriber, click now and be on stage always.